Hello, my name is Zach and I'm an engineer here at Flox. And today I'm gonna to tell you what Flox is and what it can do for you. So let's dive right in. So at its core, Flox is a package manager, but it's not like package managers that you've probably used before. So those package managers tend to install packages globally, meaning, meaning that the packages are always available, always around. And with Flox, you can do that, but you can also install packages in such a way that they're only available when you work in a certain context or on a certain project. We do that by installing packages to what we call environments. And so you might have an environment that's stored uh, alongside your source code for a certain project, but you also might have an environment that contains the tool chain for a certain language or for a certain kind of work. Uh, it's probably best to show you rather than telling you, so let's dive in. So let's say that I'm getting started on a new project. I'd normally start that out with something like git init. With Flux, I do something very similar. I do Flux init. This creates an environment in the current directory. The name of the environment is taken from the directory that I'm in, but you can change that at any point in time, no problem. What this actually does is it creates a .flux directory. So this contains a few files. Uh, we'll get into that later, but for now, you would want to add this to source control and track it just like you would your source code. What this enables is, if say if somebody wants to work on your project with you, all they need to do is if they have Flocks installed, they would say git clone and Flocks activate. And once they do that, they're, they have their entire development environment completely set up for them. All the dependencies, all the tools, everything is taken care of. So. Let's see about getting some packages installed. Let's clear the screen. So for finding packages and versions, we have two commands. We have flock search and we have flock show. Flock search is, do we have this package at all? And flock show is, if you have that package, what versions do you have available? So let's use rip grep as an example. We'll say flock search rip grep. And yes, in fact, we do have rip grep. And you can see the hint about that flock show command at the bottom here. Now let's say that we wanted more information about that package. We'd say flux show rip grep. And you can see the list of versions that we have available. So the flux catalog contains a little over three years of historical package versions, which means that if you're stuck on a very specific version of something for whatever reason, we probably have you covered as long as it falls within that, you know, roughly three year time span. So now that we've found those packages, let's install them. So we're gonna say flux install rip grep. Commands are pretty intuitive. If I wanted to uninstall it, I would just say flux uninstall, but I'm not going to do that right now. So we have packages installed to the environment. If I wanted to see all of the packages that were installed to the environment, I would say flux list. So since I only have rip grep, it's just showing this one package, but you can imagine if you are working on a bigger project, you'd have the whole list of packages there. And this also tells you which version got installed. So I, when I said Flux is all rip grep, it just gave me the latest one, which was this 14.1.1. So the next thing we'll look at is activating the environment. So all the tools and dependencies that you've installed to your environment aren't actually available until you activate the environment with the Flux activate command. And that's nice because it means that they're not just cluttering things up when you aren't using the environment. So this puts us into a subshell. You can see that you're in the environment because it's modified to prompt, but otherwise my prompt is the same. So what that's telling you is that all of my dot files, everything that I've configured for myself, all the tools that I otherwise have on my system are still available. So for instance, I am an enlightened fish user. It is a superior shell. And so I'm still on a fish shell here. Uh, normally when you work in a container, you're put into a bare bones, no frills bash shell. And frankly, that kind of sucks. So now that you're inside the environment, you would do your work, you would you know, work on your software, whatever you're doing. And at some point you will want to leave. And since this is just a subshell and there's no containers involved anywhere or anything like that, you just type exit or hit control D. So next thing we'll look at is the manifest. And this is how you make manual edits to your environment. The way that you see the manifest, which is the declarative config file for the environment uh, or make manual edits to it is with the flux edit command. And so this is just a TOML file with a few predefined sections. So with all the comments removed, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Again, it's just a TOML file, it's declarative, it's easy to read. We're gonna run through the sections real quick here. Install, this allows you to define packages you want installed in your environment. Uh, you can also set version constraints here, stuff like that. 
VARS allows you to define environment variables that are set when the environment is activated. You can use that to set things like port numbers, stuff like that. Hook and profile, these are closely related, but they both allow you to essentially define startup scripts that are run when your environment is activated. You can use that to create things like data directories, do other kinds of initialization, set aliases in your shell, stuff like that. Services allows you to define long running background programs. So if you've used stuff like Docker Compose in the past, this is pretty analogous to that. Then this options section is some more miscellaneous options and you can use it to declare what system types you want your environment to be compatible with. We'll get into that um, a different day. But let's say that I make an edit here. I'm just gonna add a blank line and save this. You'll see that it rebuilds the environment. We do this transactionally to make sure that you're never left in a broken state. If I had made a typo, it would give me the option to go back into the editor so I can fix that and not lose any edits that I just made, as that's very convenient. So I mentioned before that you can store your environment alongside your source code, and that's often what you'll want to do when you're working on a project. Another way that you can store your environment is on Floxhub. And so the way that you do that is the flux push command. So this will push a copy of this to our cloud service called Floxhub. By pushing an environment to Floxhub, you allow it to be shared. So that could be shared with other people, but it could also be shared between different projects of your own. So the way this works is that I would make some edits here. So let's say flux install hello, just some random package. It's going to install it to my local copy of that environment. And then I would be able to push flux push updates to the copy that's on flux hub. And so when that happens, anybody else that's using this environment or any other projects of mine that are using this environment, next time I go to use them, if I do a flux pull, I will then get those updates. So that allows you to keep a bunch of other projects or different developers in sync with one kind of centrally managed environment. And this, as I take a breath, brings us to a close. <laughs> um, hopefully this gives you an idea of how you could use flux in your normal development workflow. There's plenty of other little details and nifty things that Flox can do, but I think this gives you a good overview. Uh, so give Flox a try. Let us know what you think. You can find us on GitHub. We have a community Slack. All these details will be in the description. But yeah, so thanks for watching and hope you give us a try.